Mr. Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can't tell you how much I'm disappointed at what a lost opportunity we have to, I think, solve a huge problem in health care and access and quality to some, even by your numbers, 46 million, and that's about 15 percent of the American population. Abraham Lincoln said, you can't make a weak man strong by making a strong man weak. And so what we've decided to do today is abandon the very principles of America and say, you know what, it's so hard and it's so difficult, we're going to punish the 85% of Americans who have earned health care benefits as a part of their employment, and we're going to punish them and the employers who give it to them to try to cover the 15% that don't have it. That doesn't hardly seem like a solution that any of us would come to. Why would we punish the part that's working to cover the part that's not? It's like taking a queen-size sheet and trying to put it over a king-size bed. I will guarantee you the corners are going to come up. That's exactly what we've done here today. And this, this notion that it's either this or nothing is the chairman's choice. It's the Democrats' choice that it is either this or nothing. You present us very false choices. And let me tell you about the trade-offs by going to this government-run system. And oh, clearly it is, by the way, in Section 141 under the Health Choices Commissioner Act, they can actually go in and disenroll individuals. Unprecedented power by the federal government. They can rip you off your own individual plan. It's in the bill. Oh, matter of fact, if you're an employer, $250,000 of payroll. Payroll, that's gross payroll, not much. Guess what? They can disenroll your whole company off a certain plan. Tell me that you don't work for the federal government. Unbelievable. And here's the other trade-off. According to the uh, National Cancer Institute, the National, Intelli excuse me, the National Cancer Intelligence Center uh, for uh, the United Kingdom, and the Canadian Cancer Registry, here's the trade-off that they picked by having government-run health care. If you uh, get prostate cancer, you have a less chance of survivability than you do in the United States. And that's the same for skin cancer, breast cancer, bladder cancer, cervical cancer, kidney cancer, ov uh, ovarian cancer, is leukemia, and the list goes on and on and on. So what you have said to America is, we give up. It's just too hard. The government has to do it. That's insulting. So what you're going to do is you're going to look your mothers and your daughters in the eye and say, I'm sorry, we couldn't figure it out. We wouldn't allow innovation to do it. We're not going to allow the private sector to fix this problem for us. That's too hard. But I am going to tell you that if you get breast cancer, I'm sorry, honey, you have less of a chance of survival than you did before this bill passed. I will not punish any woman in America to this kind of system, knowing how great America is. The very innovation of who we are is what got us here. And it wasn't the federal government, and it wasn't Washington, D.C. It was individuals who stood up for themselves and said, we can do better. And because of that, we have the greatest middle class in the face of the earth. And this is one more tick in their ability to succeed in America. We've already told them that, gee, your energy prices uh, were too high, middle class. We're going to raise those with cap and trade. Oh, by the way, we're going to tell you what kind of car to drive. We're going to tell you what kind of light bulb you can put in. Oh, I'm going to tell you what kind of window you have to replace your, car, your uh, house with. And oh, by the way, now I'm going to pick your doctor and your plan for your future. We must and can do better. This is a travesty, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back my time. By the way, the gentleman's time.